Hello, hello, I'm back at it again with more Goosebumps content. Last time I mentioned the five villains from Goosebumps that I thought were the goofiest. This time, though, I'll be talking about the five most iconic and spooky villains from Goosebumps. Some of my choices will probably not be surprising because if you guys have seen the episodes as well, they probably freaked you out as a kid. The first spookiest villain was Slappy, first appearing in the book Night of the Living Dummy. However, his first appearance in the Goosebumps TV series was in Night of the Living Dummy 2, where his owner becomes a little girl named Amy. Amy is a struggling ventriloquist who originally has a dummy named Dennis. However, Dennis's head keeps falling off. Eventually, her father gets her a new dummy as a surprise, a handmade dummy carved out of coffin wood named Slappy. Unfortunately for Amy, she opens a can of worms when she reads the card that came with Slappy that read, Karu Marie Odonna Loma Malanu Karano. Not realizing this is what awakens the spirit inside Slappy. Resultantly, Slappy begins isolating Amy from her family and friends by insulting her family during the family talent show and scaring Amy's friend's little sister. Also, Slappy destroys the family's belongings and refuses to stop until Amy agrees to become his slave. In the end, though, Slappy gets his head cracked open by the original dummy, Dennis, and a green fog leaves the dummy's body. In the other episodes, Slappy is shown to have several supernatural abilities, such as turning people into dummies, making other dummies come to life, and possessing people. He is nearly impossible to defeat permanently, which makes him one of the best villains. The second best villain is Carly Beth's mask in The Haunted Mask. During this episode, we are introduced to Carly Beth, who is easily terrified and gets picked on all the time, especially by her friends Steve and Chuck. After Steve and Chuck sneak a living worm in her sandwich, she leaves schools and vows revenge against them. Hence, Carly Beth seeks out the creepiest mask she can find, which she does successfully. In fact, at the back of the Halloween shopkeeper's store, she finds the most horrendous mask she's ever encountered. The shopkeeper warns her she'll regret putting the mask on, but Carly Beth takes it anyway. After Carly Beth puts the mask on a few times, she realizes she can't take the mask off anymore. The mask warped onto her skin and somehow fused itself to her face and is now causing her to behave abnormally, as if she's possessed. Carly Beth's only solution to getting the mask off is with a symbol of love, a sculpture of her face which she buried in the graveyard after stating that Carly Beth is dead. Eventually, after obtaining her symbol of love that was given to her by her mother, she is able to ward off the mask along with the other recently awakened ones. Personally, what I find terrifying about the haunted mask is that these masks are actually real human faces that once were beautiful but over time became hideous and known as the unloved ones. Also, the scene where all the masks are chasing her is still creepy to watch. The third best villain, in my opinion, is the cat from Cry of the Cat named Rip. Allison, the protagonist, accidentally runs the cat over with her bicycle and decapitates it. But this is no regular cat. In fact, Rip was a failed science experiment that now has become the undead cat that is now stalking Allison for revenge. However, the more Rip attacks her, and the more Allison kills Rip, she sees a change within herself. Now she is starting to behave like a cat as well due to being scratched by Rip. Later it's revealed that Rip was too evil to die and instead of using up its own nine lives, it is absorbing its owner's life force, turning her into a half-cat, half-humanoid creature. In the end, Rip is defeated after Allison feeds them a poisonous toy mouse that causes it to explode. Though still, people suffer with after-effects from being scratched by Rip such as Allison's friend Ryan who is caught eating a mouse even after Rip's demise. The fourth spookiest villain was the evil entity in The Ghost Next Door. The story starts with the protagonist Hannah feeling very lonely. She has nightmares about her house burning down, and no matter how many letters she sends, none of her friends write her back. Finally, she meets Danny who seems to be one of the few that pays attention to her. At this time, though, she starts to become stalked by a shadow entity that has malicious intent. 
Suspicious of Danny and even accusing him of being a ghost, she soon finds out it's not him that's the ghost, it's herself. As a matter of fact, Hannah and her whole family died in a house fire five years ago, and now she has to save Danny from this malicious entity that has started to target him. Anyways, after recovering from the shocking news, she has to save Danny from a house fire in Mr. Chesney's house. But the evil spirit is trying to trap Danny in there. It insists that if Danny dies, Danny will get sent to the Shadow Realm and the entity will get to be set free. Persistently, though, Hannah is able to save Danny's life, ruining the entity's plan, and Hannah moves on to the afterlife where her family is waiting for her. The fifth spookiest villain is Andrew from The Headless Ghost, the spirit of a mischievous boy who is stuck inside Hill House in a notoriously haunted mansion. The protagonists, Dwayne and Stephanie, are also quite mischievous and love to play pranks on people. One day they decide to sneak into Hill House to look for the missing head of Andrew. With their new friend Seth's help, they sneak in when the tour is shut down. Unfortunately, they find out when it's too late that Seth is actually Andrew, the headless ghost, who borrowed someone's head and will take Dwayne's unless they find his original head. In the end, we realize that Otto, the ghost tour guide, is actually the spirit of the sea captain, and he tries to turn Stephanie into a ghost due to her lack of respect for Hill House, but both Stephanie and Dwayne escape Hill House before Otto, Andrew, or any other spirits could stop them. Honestly, for a spoiled kid that got killed for his love of strawberry ice cream, Andrew's got a mean streak and is weirdly homicidal. In conclusion, I believe the Night of the Living Dummy series, The Haunted Mask, Cry of the Cat, The Ghost Next Door, and The Headless Ghost had some of the best villains of the Goosebumps TV series. Also, if you haven't read the books, especially regarding these episodes, I definitely recommend them for a casual read. Anyways, thanks for listening and enjoy watching Goosebumps!